tentative and they're spatially separated. They can feel each other, they have a strong interaction usually. And sometimes they can create something called bump exit exitons, that is uh, an addition level within the planta, and sometimes they just modify the optical spectrum. In order to take into account this impact, we have to add an additional color to uh, here. But here the color will consist not only the uh, Coulomb interaction, also it's been, uh, they also have the electron hole pair interaction there. And then we saw something uh, here is um, electron hole pair basis from the plant to the Venice plant. It's very similar to the Cassini equation with the molecules, but only at K points and also the W, the uh, screen Coulomb interaction there. So after we do that, we can easily produce the uh, bulk properties, bulk optical spectrum very well. The problem uh, with this method is that is it's too expensive, it's like at least a hundred expensive than TDLT. And this is re the reason is because in TDLT we have uh, if we use any added color, it's, uh, it's Q independent. So Q is a wave factor of the external field. But the, the true color from BC should have a property like this. Alpha over Q squared. Well, Q is a wave factor and alpha is a constant and is different for different materials. So they should have such a form which is not there for AL, ALDA color. So people have to try different methods to increase, to create such kind of approximate color with CDFT. This is one of the choices, there are a few other choices, and there are three or four choices of how to construct this color. You can construct it directly from a BSC. Uh, you can also construct it using a more approximate method. This is a proxy method. What they do is they introduce a <coughs> which has this property here. And then they have to solve this um, equation itself consistently by putting, because you, you don't know what is epsilon, which is dimensional function, you don't know that, so you solve the um, DDLT with this color, and then you achieve self consistency. And what they say is that it can produce the bulk test very well. So for um, this, uh, a few classical bulk, like silicon carbide, carbon, or this carbide can be very good with this funnel. But uh, the performance of a surface or to be surface for our tube and so on is unclear because nobody has done that so far. And so the current status of the BSC code, I think, is, um, is, is pretty slow. I have documented that. But uh, I didn't write the tutorial because uh, it basically cannot do anything. Uh, it can do something like a molybdenum sulfide, which is always construed, and uh, boron nitride, I need a little bit on that. But other than that, I think it's very hard to calculate, and it's also very hard to converse with respect to K points. It's, it's very simple. I think it's, it's, it's too hard. Um, but the bootstrap follows, it could be promising, but the uh, I, I didn't test that, so if anybody wants to try that, just be cautious. <coughs> At least you have to converse with, with chain points. And then the third thing we do we did is, um, is um, RPA. So Thomas Wilson, he talked about this uh, RPA yesterday. He implemented the RPA code uh, in, in the Zipro code. So what, what RPA does is that uh, it takes all the excitation energies and then convert it. To correlation energy. So it's very similar to what we talked about yesterday. This non-local uh, non interaction is in the system, it can capture the plasma. It's the same, it's, it's the same mechanism here. Take all the electronic energy, energy and convert it to it, correlation energy. So you have something like this at the RPA thing. What we're doing here is a non-self-consistent RPA. So it means that we take some kind of structure, which you take PV structure, and take PV, LDA, or PV orbitals and energies, and input there to get the non surfaces and the RPA correction for total energy. And uh, in some kind, our goal right now is to, uh, to get absorption energies. Uh, the rationale for, for doing this is because there's a hope probably RPA can be good for absorption energies, which we're not very sure right now. But what we have seen in the literature is that first, RPA can solve the CO puzzle that first it can give the right absorption site, and second it can give the almost the right absorption energy. It's not still 1.1 EV now, but it's a lot of improvements, and it can get out of the line that we can improve both surface energy and absorption energy. So, for us, there's some hope to, that it can improve absorption energy. It's also because SEMPAT is um, doing a lot of catalysis, and they're scaling all this uh, absorption energy as a function of the more basic descriptors. So carbon oxygen, nitrogen, and energy, which has a very important to pull out 
but the quality is more and last time everybody is sick, the kind of soft DNA so you can get from this. And it's not only of soft DNA, so we also want to use it in the same area. And I think nobody has ever done that, and I, I'm not even sure whether it, it can be good, but it's in the house here. So we just try that. So this is the spider. We use all these approximates in here that is non sharp consistent and are initially <coughs> using TV structures for when the person, for instance, who tries with this amount of size. We're not even sure that if this structure is doing the box, but um, we should start from here. So it's actually very hard to converge uh, RP calculations to different from the calculations in, uh, in Pasmos, which is very easy to converge with respect to the, the basic set. In RP, you basically have to go to a complete basic <coughs> set. Here are the few parameters that lead to converge. The first thing is the number of uh, k points, which is the same as the number of q points, they're, they're related. And the second thing is the number of uh, frame weight or the number of empty bands. And we make them equal in the approach, so it's correlated. And the third thing to converge is the number of frequency points. I'll go through how to converge this uh, three parameters version. Um, right now in the CPU code, because it's just easier as I mentioned for a lot of individual excitations, so it's very easy to parallelize. We can throw it to a 10,000 codes without problem, because we have enough bands to do parallelization. Um, the first parameter that we have to converge is the frequency integration. So we do this integration in an uh, imaginary space, which makes the response function a smooth function. But when it's a smooth function, we can do a, it's a, a analytical integration using this graph and the integration method introduced by Thomas. And by default, we use uh, 16 points for this uh, omega integration. So instead of going to hundreds of thousands of omega points, we just use 16. And it seems to me so far it's, it's pretty good quality just with this number. And the second thing we have to converge is, uh, is the uh, energy cutoff. So RPA is really a method that has to go to the infinite basic step. It's very hard to converge this correlation energy. What we have to do, we cannot really go to infinite basic steps, we have to do an extrapolation using uh, different energy points. Usually I use like five points to do this extrapolation from it depends. I will do a lot of points and then select them to see which one actually makes sense. So in this case, for the old two cases, we start from 200 EV and that's the from 200 to 400. And it's not a problem for O2, but if you see the number of bands involved here, it's already 4,000 bands. If you, if, if you ask if I have 400 EV and the super size session is not, not very big in this case. So the immediate problem we face at the beginning when we started this is that I can't guess what's all the band because two points agree with not code at the beginning. It was not there's no framework at that point, no, one year ago. There's no the framework code was not working. So we don't have um what's all the band. So if you calculate using grid mode, this number of bands, this is uh, the hour syntax. It's it's almost impossible to do. So last year when I was visiting here, Yan Xiong, fortunately, Yan Xiong implemented framework and um, implementations. So the reason for that uh, you can solve that in framework more efficiently because when you have when you solve showing an equation, you usually show only a few occupied bands and you can solve it iteratively very efficiently. But if you like a lot of bands, you solve a lot of a huge part of your space, it's better just set up the half Hamiltonian and directly diagonalize. It's much more efficient and you generally speed up this by a hundred to four hundred times if you have this many bands you want to converge. Uh, so after we solved the ground state problem, now have enough bands to do the calculation. The next bottleneck is that the RPA is so expensive. The expensive part is coming from this <coughs> huge summation. You probably ask why do you want to do this huge summation? It's so stupid, right? It's, it looks very stupid to do a huge loop like this. There are many, uh, there are a few other ways to get around that. So if you if you work about this, for instance, people do GW without occupy without unoccupied orbital. What you do is uh, you solve a set of equations and so on. So uh, what I mean is that there are other methods that doesn't involve summation of a huge number of bands, but uh, they are either very expensive, it probably takes another one, three years to implement, or they are approximate, a more approximation rate to reduce the number of uh, unoccupied orbitals. I uh, have tried some of these approximate methods, it doesn't really work so well because up here it's really so sensitive, it depends on the Multiply by this dot, and so this 
stand up for that, or be careful. The case you basically can switch to a first to a cash transfer of just the excitation from an occupied to an unoccupied land, and then you sum up this, um, this um, excitations. It turns out that it's very surprising when I do the profiling, I did profiling when I did the PDF here, it, was, uh, it doesn't occupy so much time. So most of the time we spend it to calculate this uh, and key. But when you do RPA, the story is completely different. It's very different. It's a thousand times to calculate NG, but it takes only 10 percent of time. And instead, this step of just producing, uh, just calculating a dot, an auto product of two vectors, it takes 90 percent of total time, and it's only one line in the code. So that's uh, amazing. What we need is that if we have this kind of simple numerical problem here, we only have a dot product of a two vectors. <coughs> We can just move it to GPU, which GPU is uh, famous for that. It's very good for data intensive calculation and simple instructions. So GPU has what is called a single instruction, multiple unit. So uh, if you have uh, a lot of data that, that, that is doing similar jobs, it, it's, it's very good to, be, to put it on GPUs. So we put this on, on GPUs at the beginning, because this is what we have to just to do this um, evaluation of an um, actual product. We just move this to GPU and just without, with one week of coding, it's gained certain speed up without problem. Um, then a few months ago, I went to an NVIDIA summit. It was a meeting that uh, gathered a few engineers and uh, few other people who are doing GPUs in different parts of the scientific area. We gathered together mm -hmm. and talked about what's our bottlenecks and how to improve that. And uh, I thought from this idea of, uh, from the media engineer that you don't have to do really this because this is a vector and this is another vector. What you do is that you can group a lot of vectors and send it to the GPU once. You don't have to continue with GPS these numbers. You just wait in the CPU part or you have the love data, then you send it to the GPU. So the idea is very simple, but uh, we were not aware of this was happening before. So it's just, it's not only for MT, you can group all the other independent data and then just group them, so it's easy to send a last function of data. It's also easier to launch your color when you have a last function of data. So this is what we did, we drew independent data, and then transfer to GPU. Uh, at the beginning, we gained a speed up of 120 after we did that. There was too much, and I get complained that we should not compare a fast GPU code with a slow CPU code, because this technique can also be applied to CPU code. And then, uh, so I was forced to write a CPU code as well to apply this technique. Otherwise, I would just get a lot of criticism that there's too much to speed up. So after I applied this thing also to CPU, and finally we achieved a, a speed up in the CPU code of 30 times. And the GPU code is 40 times on top of that. So right now the GPU code is uh, around a thousand times compared to what we found in the farm. Because I didn't optimize the farm, so I found here in the CPU farm. Uh, there's some special thing I did here. You can see that there are a few numbers that relate to PAW, which is very big. So what happens to the PAW terms for PAW then is, is uh, all this correction around individual atoms. You have the different projector functions and different atoms. And the number of projector functions is also different. The point is that the projector functions on each atom is usually a very few, like 20 to 100. It's usually less than 100. So I have a very small matrix corresponding to a PAW correction. And we don't want that. So I have to actually write my own kernel of that thing. So what my own kernel I do is that I don't have to look over atoms. The atoms will become a thread. So the thread will run over the index of uh, both the thread will run index of both um, projector functions on each atom and projector functions and something else. So it's actually run three indices together. And then uh, that's why you can see this kind of speed up because this is something you can't do on CPU, you cannot paralyze. With threads on CPU on different atom plan, you have to look over atom. But in GPU, you don't have this, this summation, but then it's not needed anymore. And everything is paralyzed with threads. So finally, what we get is we get it's actually not so much nine, of course, it's only a thousand nine to put that part. And then, um, and then because um, after we move this part to GPU, it's everything in CPU is so slow. You cannot even calculate a 3 by 3 matrix multiplication on CPU. It's just inhorably so. And basically, you have to move every piece of line to a CPU, which is very annoying. It means that you have to do a lot of trivial work. 
It's very boring. I mean, you don't want to move a, a very simple task for GPU, but you have to. So we have to write all these things in GPU. It's, it's pretty boring, I think. Uh, but anyway, so this is the time of speed up we get. Um, but what I care most is not really about speed up because we want to calculate things. We don't want, I don't want to spend some time to speed up our code and do that thing. And then uh, my goal is to calculate our software energy. So I check the performance of a few systems. You can see that. Uh, the first three system is that we can do that on CPU. And the last decision is that I never get a single result on CPU. So for me, that was not doable. And now it's doable, and now it's even very fast. So here, the zero absorption on microsurface is something like 2 by 2 units now on 5 layers. This is what usually people do for PD, calculating also absorption energy, that is at And now, even with, uh, with the RPA, it takes like five, 5 hours. It's not converged, I would say. If we really want a converged calculation of zero absorption on nickel <coughs> surface, it takes one and a half day. I would say it's still much better, actually faster than, for instance, structural relaxation, which doesn't quite not that good. And this one, this guy, Kara, is very good. You can throw it to no matter how many reviews I have, you have. So, so I think that's, that's pretty promising for the calculation of um, of a shocking energy and transition state value. Uh, I don't have any results to really show you on, uh, on this uh, shocking energy and barrier. But instead, I think I'll show you something else. Because I'm not sure about my recent result about barriers. Um, so before, at the meanwhile, we start doing this TPU thing, we also do something like if we can't really do either shocking energy at that point, why don't we just try something simple? We want to look at upside. Uh, buffer oxides for emission energies. So I want you to pay attention to, uh, to this, um, how I choose these oxides. The first criteria for choose these uh, oxides is that um, it has different oxides in this state. If you look into the literature, many people like to say that PV underestimate the emission energy of oxides for many other things, and they always choose the same, the same state. Because then you have, um, and you have a single error. For the same oxidation state. But if you change oxidation state, the average error introduced by PD or RPD is different. It means that you cannot have a single line to pick this data if you have a different oxidation state. So this is the first criteria I choose. I choose three different kinds of oxidation state and have to see how RPD perform when the chemical environment is different. And the second criteria is that we want to do transition metal oxides. But the problem is that we can't get very precise PD energies. So the oxides I've uh, shown you here is that we can, we can get a PV energy that is um, 0.05 EV different to convert the mass. I've calculated number of different kinds of uh, transition metal oxides, and the difference of the PV energy with mass for this transition metal oxides, like cuprate, zinc oxide, and other state of the aluminum oxide, and so on, is in the average 0.1 EV to 0.15 EV, which is a precision accuracy of our here. We can't tolerate that. We can't say that we have a PV difference of 0.15 dB, and now my RPA decision is 0.15 dB. And so finally, I have to delete all these oxides, transition metal oxides, from the table here, because I think the PV data is, is not good enough. We don't know that the fast is uh, good or bad, but, but the, there's a difference there. So I have to figure out what is, uh, what is the difference in the by setups. So that is uh, this uh, criterion here. And then we also have the criterion that I mean, <coughs> transition metal oxides, many of times, they cannot even get to the right structure. So at least uh, we based all these calculations on PV structure and PV orbitals. And this has to make some sense. So this is the final data, which is uh, it's, uh, unfortunately mostly a simple group 1 and group 2 metal oxides. Uh, and uh, I can now experiment the data when there was a zero temperature. And the zero point energy is included, but it doesn't change the mean absolute error. So if you include zero point energy or exclude, you get the same number. You get individual different number around there, but then you get the final mean average error. The mean average error is the same. This is 0.15 EV. And what you see here from my theorem is um, is we have an assumption that um, here is um, that you can see that it's totally is still underlined, which is, which is a general trend for RPA, as shown as yesterday, no matter if it's for molecule, adverse energy, or for solid, cohesive energy, so always underlined for surface absorption energy. 
So it's not really surprising that we have a commission and the enterprise. <coughs> and if you want to look at what is the what is the structure you have, you can say that um, you are using the TV structure, what if you use some screw structures or structure more to experiment that. So I have two two representative examples which have two extreme cases in this data data set is that one is much larger than it is supposed to be, and one has much smaller than it is supposed to be. The, this is, uh, the lithium chloride is larger, that's 16%, and the system oxide is uh, smaller. Oh, it's, uh, system oxide is larger, that's 16%, and lithium oxide is smaller. You can see that RPA can improve. Um, RPA can improve the system oxide, that is um, more bottom which is the L, is the experimental here, and this is the minimum. So for this small side, we improve the, uh, the volume, and the lower the total is by 44 mV, but for this small side, it doesn't improve, so it's doing very bad. So that's uh, what I estimate is, uh, is what the public is the error for this, uh, for this uh, whole data side, because all the other structures are much better than this two case. So the 44 mV base is still, uh, because our precision we claim is 0.15 mV, so I think this is something tolerable. And because uh, usually when we think about that the PV and the bank, we like to think about is, is O2 is wrong. We don't say that it's, uh, the outside is wrong, it's the trivial of fantasy is wrong to be O2 is wrong. So what we do is that we, we try to distinguish what is the error, whether it's from O2, or what we call reference fantasy. But it's uh, the energy sequence that you can also envision it. And we found out here can do both. So the summary for that is that we uh, have a um, piece of code that was plasmon, and it's very easy to calculate plasmon in the GPAL code. It also plasmates something that is relatively easy to measure in the experiment. You can get theoretic comparison with the experiment. And the excitons is also easy to calculate for measure in the earth perspective in the experiment. And um, if you use PSC, the agreement is very good. But it's very hard to calculate and very hard to converge. And right now I have a disagreement with uh, Thomas also now how to treat the, the versions of Kunum Kunum in PSC code. I haven't agreed yet. And then, um, and then the RP on GPU is pretty robust. And uh, but it's very difficult to converge with uh, the K points per metal. And right now I have many N2 uh, transition states of N2 on the same interface. So hard to convert with K points. Because what you see is the RPA can take into account all this non local interaction. You can probably imagine that the interactions between, uh, you have to use a lot of K points to, to sample this uh, space. And there are a few other applications and implementation based on this response function. This is Apple, as I in the GW. Question is covering plasmons. And Thomas is doing extended uh, ALPA stuff. And then the memory is calculating the, the, using the TDA to the system for solar cell generations. And finally, I would like to thank, I have a lot of people to thank in Canty. Christian and Kasper has a lot of support for me, discussing with me. And uh, uh, Kasper is not here, but uh, I really would like to thank him. And I have got a lot of coding support from Jens Jung and Lask, and computer support from Martin Order. And then all these discussions with Thomas, Starko, Mikko Christmas, because GLD was really important for my calculations, and Kirsten. And in some parts, uh, I'd like to thank the ASDOC School for actually purchased $400,000 to use for my project. It's just a little bit too stressful. And um, it's, uh, it's coming from a project from a from street office, which is a material genome, genome project. Um, I'm working with uh, Chris, Chris and Deline. Yeah, some kind of people doing GPU with me, and then also two uh, media engineers also working on GPU with me. Um, and then finally, I would like to thank Chris Bambi and Chris uh, uh, Exit Computer Center. Give me two minutes, hours, for testing GPU or uh, RPA And NVIDIA donated $10,000 of uh, GPU to Pathway, and they also sent for an engineer to help me. And then we also have a general support from the center inside. Thank you.
O2 molecule, no. which is better in RPA than PE or? I, it could be. It's very hard to distinguish that, I think. So if you look at different oxidation states, the error is also reducing, but I would say it could be also mainly from the O2 molecule. Okay. And the other question that you mentioned, this uh, factor of 30 speed up in the CPU part of the, of the RPA. Yes. Would that work also without the GPUs, or is that only that in connection with the That works with the GPU, but it needs uh, to get the, the branch. So it, it, the trunk comes to the GPU. But, but it wouldn't work on a, on a standard CPU machine? It works on CPUs. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. Yeah. Do you have a question? Yes. I, I did not really understand uh, how does it relate to this uh, talk of yesterday from Thomas that uh, RPA is, is quite bad and uh, we have to do something else. So. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I think it depends on what you are looking at. Thomas is aiming something like one kilopower per mole, that's 40, that's 40 mm, right? And for me, I'm aiming at 0.1 mm. I think also oxide is a particular case where PB is, is very bad and RPA is, I mean, if you compare to the rest of the molecules, PB is worse than the rest of the molecules and RPA is or better than the rest of the molecules. But the oxide, you really get some... Yes, I, 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 <laughs> yeah, I just, I remember once we had a discussion about LDA with oxides. I think it's some kind of a mis mystery, so maybe you can comment on this. Yeah, actually, uh, no. I've tried all this with RPA as well. Yeah, perfect. We enjoyed that, but RPA performs so good with mainly with the It's It's comparable to RPA. It's only one outside is out of nine. But all the other outsides with RPA was really good for the mission. Do you have a comment on that? Yeah, I was just going to Question also from the oxides. I'm just curious if you tried also to compare the, instead of taking O2 and the bulk metal as a reference, you just have the simple metals as, as a reference. How is the results then? Do you have a single metal? I mean, if you calculate, you can say you, you, here you use uh, and the bulk metal and the oxygen molecule as a reference. You use an oxygen atom and the metal atom as a reference instead. I think the argument's worse. Yeah, well, they'll probably be worse for both PE and RPA, but... Uh, I haven't done that. Okay. Um, I would say that, for me, <coughs> I'm not really pursuing the RPA position. I would say that I, I want to know whether this works for absorption and what we can get. If it's bad, we'll probably think about ways to improve that. We can use the ALDA or salt and so on. So right now, the question of whether it improves the transition state better it's something that I haven't been able to answer yet. So let's just get back to Mosin's question about the oxidation states. Yeah. You don't see any improvement in RPA over LDA when it comes to the superoxides? I think LDA is, or I didn't do that. I didn't do RPA on top of LDA. What I can see is that LDA gives pretty good permission over the, which is almost as, as, as good as RPA. Well, I think it was a bit better. <laughs> I don't agree that term, but <laughs> yeah. uh, <clears throat> this is a this is a very strange question for me that I, I really don't understand. This. So you have three thousand unoccupied states that you feed into this starting point. Um, many years ago, we tried to look at uh, to find ingredient functions from uh, commercial animal results, and the, the ones that we were producing were horrible. The way, the way functions, the unoccupied ones. Um, what's the quality of the wave functions, 3,000 mg wave functions above the Fermi level? Mm -hmm. And uh, so isn't there a lot of, of actually the accuracy that we are producing in this non-self-consistent, I think, because it, you're feeding yeah. those into this. Or is it, is it, is it self-consistent or not self-consistent? It's not self-consistent. So how sensitive are you, and, and, and has the accuracy of, was this G-Power equation, yeah. improved that fantastically over what we were seeing not working with a couple uh, today? I well, they, 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 what we were doing, when, when you were doing something else, which was better, it was more complex. <laughs> the functions back then were not really very well converged far above the further. And, uh, and here we have 3,000 of them so far. Maybe the GP 
how ones are really, really excellent. But you were in the you were analyzing the, I would tell you, complete, yeah. completely, instead of doing isolation from the bottom yeah. up. That so could be a any large scale and not really any large scale I'm solver you look or analysis at, at because, because what we do is that we really have a boundary. We have a simulation boundary. Right? There's a boundary. So it's it's really solving a, almost a plane wave problem in in a bound. Mm -hmm. So the higher and it's say we mostly look at the plane wave, which actually I did look at that. We really look at the plane wave. They do, they do. Yeah, because they don't feel very much of the potential and the so, so the main step is that you have this large matrix. Is that not iterative so result? That it can be, it's just very slow. It's better not to iterate solve it. So you, you, it's brute force inversion. Yeah, there's brute force inversion. Because the whole matrix would be something like 27, like 27, or 37. It's much easier to invert this matrix compared to that. I think we have time for a single last question. I think the question of what the quality of the base set is could be checked in those surface problems by just increasing the fragment. Because it should be converged, it shouldn't change the more fragment. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's just one comment. You don't care. The quality of the wave functions do not matter. Oh. No, no, this is true. The only thing that matters is that you have to have a complete basis for the description of the Hamiltonian and it's consistent with h minus c minus 1. And then the fact how you get it doesn't care how the, is the quality of the wave function doesn't matter as long as it's complete with the description of your Hamilton. And that's the reason why in her case it's working because she's using a full diagonalization of the, of the Hamiltonian and not an iterative approach. And we were using the iterative approach. And using all the codes that use iterative will not work. All the codes using iterative techniques will not work. Thank you for that. Thank you.